Hello this morning, my brothers and sisters. This is a beautiful Sunday morning this morning. And I tell you, I really feel good about um, this morning. It's just so good to be out here in Mother Nature. I mean, it, it just does me so good to just to be out here and meditate on God. And to get out here early in the morning when there's nobody out here, just you and God. It is a pleasant, pleasant uh, feeling inside. So this morning we're going to talk about uh, Revelation chapter 17, 1 through 18. And um, this is dealing with some of the end time stuff. But most of all I like about this chapter is from 1 through 6, it deals with uh, paraphrasing and um, things that you may not understand. But the most, the best thing about this is uh, from uh, verse 7 all the way through 18, it describes what verse 1 through 6 talks about. And this, this is where God just gives us a chance to understand it, understand Revelation a little bit better. And um, it's just beautiful how he did this uh, with John. <clears throat> and this is going to be talking about, this is series 80, 89. And this is going to be talking about the Scarlet Woman and the Scarlet Beast. Um, so we're going to begin reading at verse 1. Okay, then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls. We're still talking about the bowls. We talked about it in uh, 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 16. Now we're going to talk about just briefly in uh, 18. Mm, seven bowls. Uh, called. No, came and talked to me. The angel came and talked to John, saying, saying to me, come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. And again here, um, water means something else. In this case, if you go all the way down to uh, verse 15, it tells you what waters mean. It tells you what that great harlot mean and i'm gonna drop down to that right now it says number 15 says then he said to to me the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are people multitudes nations and tongues see i i've told you before when you deal with revelation you're always talking about people places and things so in this case we're talking about water but we're actually talking about people that's what we're talking about we're only we're, we're, we're only dealing with people here people kings and uh the devil himself so this is what we're dealing with here and then when you go back up uh, number two number two says with whom the king of the earth commit fornication and the inhabit inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication number three says so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness this is what the angel did to john and i saw a woman sitting on the scarlet beast sitting on the scarlet beast which was which was full of names of blasphemy. So that woman sitting on that beast, her uh, uh, mouth was full of blasphemy, where she where she had blasphemed against God. Remember in, in, in chapter sixteen we talked about that a little bit, and it's those it's those people who didn't want to be saved, didn't care about being saved but they just spoke blasphemy against God himself. And these are the, the ones that's not gonna be saved. These are the ones that don't wanna be saved. So these are the type of people that we're dealing with here in this um, lesson eight, lesson seven, Revelation 17. And then it says, um, having seven heads and 10 horns. See, here we go. This is a metaphor again. We're talking about the seven heads and the seven horns again. And um, that also is down here in um, 
the lower lower verses as well. Uh, but I want to run through this right quick. And then and, and then number four says the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and purple and, and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the fit and the fitness fitness of her fornication. This is what these people was all about. They were all about uh, having unknown and, and, incorru and, and, and corruptible sex with each other, just like Solomon and Gomorrah did. I mean, they just did whatever they wanted to. They didn't care nothing about what God wanted them to do. They just cared about what they wanted to do. And this, this, this is where we got to watch and be careful because we don't want to fall in those, into the same footstep that they did because we could very easily go astray and, and just start doing what they do. But no, we want to stay true to God. That's what we want to do. And then it says, number five says, and her forehead, a name was written. Same thing again. We talked about that in, in, in uh, chapter 16. The sign of the beast, 666. They have, they, the devil has a sign on his forehead, forehead as well. And it's not good because it means destruction and death. That's what that means. And then uh, it says, um, mystery, oh, here we go again. Mystery Babylon, the great. We still talking about Babylon. Babylon has so much to do with the children of Israel and Judah. He, they, I mean, it was just, it, I mean, that was the um, empire in that day that ruled everything and everybody. When they went out to war, they, they won. They took over. This is what they did to Jerusalem. They took over. They tore Jerusalem up, left it in ruins. So Babylon here, I mean, Babylon is still talking about Babylon today. Matter of fact, Babylon today is Iraq. That's who Babylon is. And matter of fact, they are building it up. They are rebuilding Babylon right today. They've been doing it for the last, I think it was nine years. So in the end time, this going, it's going to be this great Babylon again. What kingdom it's going to be, I don't know. What king is going to be, I don't know. What president, I don't know. But Babylon is going to start all over again. You have to watch the Middle East, the Mediterranean area. You have to watch that area and, and always listen to the news and see what's going on over there in Jerusalem, places like that, because that's where this stuff going to start. And this is where it's going to end. The Valley of Jehoshaphat. This is where it all is going to end. That day when God called his people, his warriors, his, his army together. And Satan going to call his army together. And this is where this battle will be fought over in that area. Oh, man, this is something else. The mother of harlots and the abomination of the earth. It says Babylon was the mother of harlots, the mother of different religions, um, goddesses that they had over in that day. <clears throat> and what happened was we're talking about the harlots of those people, the harlot of the king, king, um, I can't think of his name right now. Uh, hold, hold, hold. Mm, can't think of his name right now. But anyway, that king was a terrible king. Terrible. And he ruled that nation just like he wanted to. And it was corrupt. They did in and everything they wanted to. And it was an abomination before God and all of mankind. So this is what we're looking at here. The great Babylon. And which great Babylon going to come to a fall anyway. As we move up in the further chapter where it talks about, I think it talks about it in 18. And then number, let me read number six. Number six says, I saw a woman drunk with the blood of the saints 
and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Two things happened here. Two things happened here. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Great amazement. Because these, this is the woman. These are the people that carried out the death of many saints. They carried it out. They, they the death of Jesus Christ, the death of the of, of the apostle, the death of the prophets, the death of King. These people were crazy, and they were crazy for Satan. They had the mind of Satan, and this is how they work. They work um, as far as uh, kingdomships authoritarianism and they wanted to be in control power hungry is as they were just like today look at the united states we got power hungry people right now in the united states and they are working for satan that's what you got to watch out for anybody that works uh on a power authority power um authority power authority authority uh, uh, point of view working for Satan that's who they work for and and it was the blood of the saints the blood of the saints and they got martyred they got martyred okay so now those metaphors up top now we're going to go down to uh, verse 7 drop down to verse 18 and we're going to read what it, what it really means and then it says, <clears throat> the meaning of the woman and the beast. But the angel said to me, uh, why did you marvel? Why did you marvel? I will tell you the mysteries of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. Listen at this. These are the metaphors now. Now we're getting ready, now they're getting ready, he's getting ready to explain it. Eight. The beast that, that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit. Same thing we talked about in chapter uh, uh, 16. Same thing. And go to uh, perdition. And we talk about that beast. Ain't about it, Satan. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel. They will marvel as well. The people on earth. Uh, whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. See, these are people that want to do wrong, have their own way. And they want to follow Satan. These are the people that they're talking about. From the foundation of the world, since the foundation of the world, since Adam and Eve, when they messed up and followed Satan. Yeah. When they, when they see the beast that was and is not and yes and yet is they'll see who that beast is just like adam and eve they, they found out who that beast was they found out it was satan sitting up in the, in the in in that tree and they were told not to eat of that tree but yet they still did anyway just like he is telling us many times and things what not to do and we do them anyway so <laughs> Excuse me. So there's a line that has to be drawn. It has to be drawn. And we have to draw that line between right and wrong. Which tree are you, are you going to eat of? The tree of life, which is Jesus Christ, or the tree of knowledge, good and evil, which is the devil? Which tree are you going to eat of? That same tree come back to you. We talked about Satan. And now we talked about Adam and Eve, what they did. But what are we doing? Are we eating that same tree that they ate of? And we have a desire to keep on eating it? Because that's what it's all about. It's a desire that can't be killed, can't be crushed. No one can do it but Jesus Christ. Because he crushed it while he was on earth. He crushed those sinful deeds and desires and practices. He crushed them. He made them non-existent. Okay, where was I? Okay, number nine says, 
Here is the mind which, which has wisdom. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads and the seven mountains are seven mountains. The seven heads mean there are seven mountains over there in that region. There are seven mountains. Mountains. And I don't know whether it's talking about the seven churches or not. Because seven, the seven churches sit on seven mountains. So we, I don't know for sure. There's not enough information in the Bible or <clears throat> from my studies that I have gathered. That's what they were talking about. And then it says, uh, number nine says, in the seven mountains, on which the woman sits. On which the woman sits. That person that want to do wrong. That king that want to do wrong. Uh, number 10 says, there are seven kings. See, now we're talking about the seven kings. And five have fallen. Seven kings and five have fallen. One is, and the other has not yet come. And when, and when he comes, when he comes, he must continue a short time. When he comes, it's going to continue as a short time. Remember we were talking about Satan? Excuse me. He said he's just going to be loose for a short time to create all kind of havoc that he can just to fool people, just to uh, get people intimidated, just to terrify people. That's what he's going to do. That, that's his job, to get you to change your mind. Are you going to change your mind? And do things, do what he asks, he asks you to do? Or when things get so rough, when these trials and tribulations come, are you going to change your mind? Are you going to blaspheme God? Because that's what he's going to try, try to get you to do. And this is what God is asking. Are you going to do and follow him? No. You must hold on to the faith. You must trust God. Number 11 says, the beast, the beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is the seventh and is going to perdition. So we already know where he's going. That beast going straight to hell. Number 12 says, the ten horns which you saw are ten kings. See, now we're describing it. Who have received the kingdom as yet? But they receive authority for one hour and as king with the beast. It's one hour. That's one hour they receive the, the, the kingdomship with the beast. Um, number 13 says, Then all of, all of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. This is what all president who... On a, under the dictatorship, they give all their power to Satan himself. Because that's the only way they can survive. They can't survive just by doing right. That's too, that's too right. But doing wrong, doing evil, hatred, oh, they can do that. Watch how a dictator acts. He acts just like Satan himself. Matter of fact, he is Satan. Because he has taken on that spirit of Satan, and those are the two spirits that you're gonna be that that that, that, um, um, that Paul talks about in 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 Romans. Two spirits warring against one another, God and Satan. Those are the two spirits right there. You either gonna be one of one of, of one or you're not. So you choose which one you're gonna be. Okay, number thirteen. Number thirteen. These are the these are the one mind, and they will give the power and authority to the beast. Fourteen. These, this will make war with the Lamb. They're going to make war with God, Jesus Christ. That's what they're going to do, and the Lamb will overcome them. But Jesus is going to overcome because why? God gave him all power. 
and authority. That's why. For he is the Lord of, of Lord and King of Kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. 15. This, uh, then he said to me, the waters which you saw were the harlot sit, where the, where the harlot sits are people. So now you see what the water is talking about up in chapter one, uh, in verse one. It's not my people. That's what we're always talking about. We're talking about people. Multitude, nations, and tongues. Number 16 says, and the 10 horns which you saw on the on the beast, this will lay this will hate the harlot. They're gonna hate one another. They're gonna turn on one another. Those kings, oh yeah, they're gonna turn on one another. And some of them are gonna destroy some other king. Because why? They want to be the the number one all powerful on earth. Make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. This is what's going to happen to those people on the earth. They're going to be burned with fire. This is what's going to happen. Um, which is the bottom of the spit. That's where they're going. Number 17 says, For God has put, in, put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose. God did it. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? God did it now. God did it. It's just like when God asked in, in, in 16th chapter when he asked um, in heaven, who, what can we do to uh, King Ahab? What can we do? And he asked the people in heaven, and then he said, and then somebody said, a lion spirit is said. A, 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 a unclean spirit said, I know what we can do. We can put a lion spirit into his prophets, and he'll listen to them. And then God said, go ahead and do it. God gave permission. See, you have to ask permission, permission with God in order to do anything against God's people. Just like Satan in, in the book of Job. He had to ask permission. You see? <laughs> and um and uh let me see where was I until the word of God are fulfilled. It says, give their kingdom to the beast until the word of God is fulfilled. Give it to him. It's fine. He can't win no way. Give it to him. Let him do whatever he wants to to my people. He can't win. Um, number 18. And the woman who you saw in that great city which reigned over the kings of the earth. That king, Babylon, reigned over the cities of the, in, in, the, in, 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 in the earth. They reign. Yes, they reign. They took over. And I'm gonna read a summary here right quick. Um, I got a little summary written out here and it says the fact that the whole Babylon is referring to as a mystery, meaning what, what we cannot be completely certain as to her identity the past the passage does give us some uh, some clue however revelation 17 and 9 explain this explain this call of a mind with wisdom see god give us wisdom he said if you if you don't have wisdom ask him ask him, and he'll give it to you so um this is what he's saying here. You need to ask wisdom. If you want to understand the book of Revelation, that's what I had to do. I had to ask God, give me the wisdom to understand the book of Revelation. And he opened it up to me. And then it says, the seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. Excuse me. 
many uh, commentators link this passage to, with the Roman Catholic uh, Church because in ancient times, the city of Rome was known as the city on seven hills. Seven hills pre, uh, represent seven kings or kingdoms. You see what I mean? And at that time, at that time, uh, where the seven churches sit down by the seashore, uh, Rome controlled that area. Uh, Greece controlled it at first, but now, but then, but after they left, uh, Rome took over and Rome controlled it. So now we over there now, Iraq controls it. They are the Babylon now. So once everything started happening, started rolling, then we're going to have a better understanding of what's going to happen in the end time. Visually, we will be, who's going to be still living, we will be able to see that. And then we will get, we can understand it much more better. And then it says, the five of which have fallen. Five of these kingdoms have fallen in that day. They had fallen. One that is, one that is, and one that is coming. Uh, therefore, the whole of Babylon cannot refer exclusively to Rome. So that, that, that just knocks out Rome. And uh, Revelation 17, 15 tells us, then the angel, where was I? Oh, oh, then the angel said to me, the water you saw where the prostitute sitting, sits, where the prostitute sits are people, multitudes of nations and languages. The whole, the whole of Babylon will have great uh, worldwide effects, no influence over people and nations. And you'll find that in uh, verse 10 and 14 as we had already read. Describe a series of eight or ten, eight or and then ten kings. Uh, ten kings with as the beast. The whole Babylon will will at one time have control over these kings. You see, the whole Babylon will have control over these kings. Meaning authori authoritism in Revelation 17, 18. But at the same point, the king will, will turn on her and destroy her. They're going to destroy one another. Revelation 17, 16. And listen at this. This is the most important, the best part out of it. It says, so, can the mysteries of the whole Babylon be solved? Yes. At least uh, 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 particularly the whole of Babylon is an evil world system. You would have just said, the whole of Babylon is an evil world system, which religion, which they had goddesses, all right? Then it was a world system with the government, which controls people. This is the whole philosophy behind uh, authoritism. We must control the people. The people don't know, know, know um, how to be free. We don't want them free. We want them under punishment, suffering, and uh, destruction, hatred. This is what we want. When God wants totally different, God wants you to have peace. God wants you to uh, uh, have patience. God wants you to have mercy. God wants you to have love. Totally opposite of what Satan wants. Um, in the world system, it says controlled by the Antichrist. Controlled by Satan. That's his whole purpose. His whole purpose is to control us. During the last days before Jesus returns. That's his whole purpose. Um, the whole of Babylon also, look, has religious uh, concentrations. Religious 
con I'm sorry, connotations have religious problems. There are going to be people that claim they are serving God right now, but they're going to be serving the devil because he has already came into the church and tricked people into thinking that they are really serving God and which they're not. They're serving Satan himself. It's going to be a sad day. And then it uh, uh, has religious connotations. Spiritually adultery with the beast being the focus of an ungodly end time religious system. And see what I'm saying? An ungodly religious system. In the end time, this is where it's going to be. It's all going to be about religion. That's what it's going to be. And we have to understand those things. That's why the Bible says, watch. So you can see the signs of the time and what's going to happen. You have to watch. Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. This is what we have to do. And I'm going to read uh, one of the scriptures here. I should have read that earlier, but I'm sorry. I got it going so fast. I have a couple of scriptures here. Uh, this is Job, first test. This is what Job was tested. And this goes with verse 17. Uh, let me go back to 17. <laughs> and 17 says, For the God has put in put it into her heart to fulfill his purpose. God put it in his heart to, so that he could fulfill, fulfill God's purpose. And look what happened. And Job says, number six says, uh, Job 1, 6 through 12, it says, One day, uh, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord. And the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where? And then this is what the Lord said. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord. I have been... Uh, patrolling the earth, watching everything that goes on. You see what Satan does? He watch everything that goes on. Guess who else watch what everything goes on? God does. God knows everything. He sees all, hears all. Satan does the same thing because why? He came from God. God created him. Uh, patrolling the earth, watching everything that can go. Okay, number eight says, then the Lord asked Satan, have you uh, notice my servant Job. He is the he is the finest man in all the earth. I mean, God was just bragging off Job. Um, um, he is blameless, a man of complete intelligence, integrity. He fears God and says and and says, uh, says a way from stays away from evil. Uh, number nine says Satan replied to the Lord, Yes, but Job has good reason to fear God. <laughs> Number 10 says, you have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. God does that for us. He put protection around us. His protection, his angels, they protect us and keeps us out of harm's way. Um... And okay, okay, you have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. Sound like to me somebody jealous. Uh, number 10, number 10, no, 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 number 20, number 11. But reach out and take away everything he has, and he will surely curse you and curse you to your face. That's what Satan said. Number 12 says, All right, the Lord said, All right. You may test him. The Lord said to Satan, uh, do whatever you want with, e with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's presence, and he went and did just what the Lord. Go ahead. You try it. Do whatever you want to. Don't touch his life. 
You see, don't touch his life. God permitted him to do that. Just like he's in the last days, he's going to permit Satan to do that. Go ahead, go ahead. Test my folks. Test my people that's called by my name. It's okay. Go ahead. You see? And then I'm going to read another uh, scripture that go, this these two scriptures here go with uh, verse 1 and verse um, 3, 1 through 3. And the event prior to the Lord's second coming, this is in 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4. And it says, now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and how we will be gathered to meet him. Number two says, uh, don't be easily sh uh, shaken or alarmed by those who, those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. I've heard this. See, in my lifetime, I've heard this. And not knowing any better, I was a little shaken. But the thing, the, what I know now, oh, they can't shake me now. I look, I look for different signs now. I look for those signs that the Lord has already put before me in the scriptures. That's why it's so important to read Revelation so that you will get a clear understanding of what the end time is really like, what's going to happen so that you cannot be fooled. God don't want, God will not allow you to be uh, 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 dumbfounded, ignorant. He won't allow you to be that, that way. He wants you to be full of wisdom and fully understand the word of God and knowledge to know the difference, the scriptural knowledge. Um... Okay, it has already began. Don't believe them, even if they claim to have had a spiritual vision or revelation. That's what we had one time before. Remember that? Uh, forget this guy's name. Um, he said the world was coming to an end, and it was a big lie. It was a big, big lie. Um, or, a, or a letter supposing, supposing it from us. From Paul, what he was talking about. Don't be fooled by what they say, for the day will come, will not come until there is a great, oh, listen at this, until there is a great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness revealed, uh, the one who brings destruction, which is Satan. Don't be fooled, it says, for the day will not come until. There is a great rebellion against God. He said, then you'll know when it becomes a great rebellion, just like right now, uh, what happened in the last presidency. It was a great rebellion against God. But they, they played it off so well, uh, people, a lot of people didn't even see it. But those of Christ, those who belong to Christ, they saw it. See, that's why it's so important to read the word and understand the word so that you will not be fooled and you follow the wrong person in the end time. You have to stick with God. And number 11, no, 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 no. Number four, he will, he will exalt himself and defy everything that the people call God mm. and every object of worship. He will defy it. He will even sit in the temple of God. He's going to sit in the church house. Isn't that what he's saying? He's going to sit in the temple of God. The temple of God is the church house. With the people of God who serve God. <clears throat> mm, mm, mm. Man, claiming that he himself is God. Oh yeah, I've been already been in church, one, one church. This man came and proclaimed himself as God. Yeah, he sure did. This is, has already happened. I've seen it firsthand, but that's what's gonna happen. Um, now I'm gonna read the, the last verse, which is uh, Daniel 9, 26 through 27. Gabriel's message about the anointed one. And here's something else you can watch. Number 26 says, um, 
after this after this period of six six sixty two sets of seven, the anointed one will be be killed. The anointed one will be killed, appearing in a uh, appealing to have accomplished nothing. And a ruler will rise whose army will destroy the city and the temple. The end will come with the flood and war and its, and its uh, mysteries are deceived, deceived from that time to the very end. The ruler will make a, 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 a thirsty with the people of with people of a period of one set of sevens, but after ha after half this time, he will put an end to the sacrifices and and, and, and the offerings, and as the uh, climax to all his uh, terrible deeds, he will set up a, a sacrificial uh, object that caused the destruction uh, desolation until the until the fate decree for this defiler is finally poured out on him and that's in the book of Daniel again is given a prophecy of what's going to happen in the end time that's what's going to happen and my fellow brothers and sisters, I hope you got a lot out of this. Um, I surely did. I tell you, it, it, the more I read it, the more it opened up. It, it, it just opens up to me. And now I can clearly understand. Now I don't fear no more. I don't worry no more. Because I understand what's going to happen now. You can better accept, some, accept something when you know it's going to happen. You can better. I know I do. I don't know how you do, but that's how I, do, I am. As long as I know. I can understand, and I can prepare myself for it. Just like you, God is saying, prepare yourself for it. Prepare your spirit. Prepare your surroundings. Don't cleave to your houses, your possessions, your lands. Because in the end time, when all that's taken away from you, guess what? You're going to lose it. You're going to lose it. Because you, you put too much claim on it. And that's what that's the, that, that's how Satan fools you. He wants you to claim these possessions. Put your heart in the wrong place. Put your heart in these people, places, and things. Look at Job. Job didn't put his his heart in people, places, and things. He lost his family. He life, lost his livestock. He lost his land. And then on top of that, his wife said, won't you cuss God and die? His heart wasn't in his wife. His heart was in God. That's why, <clears throat> that's why God told Satan, won't you test him? Go ahead. Because God knew where his heart was. God knew he had his heart. God knew he was first in his life. That's why you have to be first. You have to allow God to be first in your life before anything else in this world. He got to be first. He will be first. There are a lot of people that die because they lose their children. They die in their heart. They die in their mind. They can't let them go. They have to be on uh, different types of uh, drugs just to make it. That's not the way God called us to be. Job said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. So what? The great thing God did was with Job after he found out that Satan, that his whole heart was on, in, in God and not Satan. He can be de deterred in no way or shape or form. God turned around and gave him double. Double from everything he lost, he gave him double. That's the God I serve. That's the God I serve. I'm just waiting on the New Jerusalem. I ain't putting everything, I ain't putting my mind in nothing on this earth no more. 
I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting on what he said he promised me. He promised us the new Jerusalem where he's going to be present and his son, Jesus Christ, is going to be present. Oh, is that going to be a beautiful and wonderful day? That's what my sights is. My heart is set on that. Not on what's here in this world today. This world is full of corruption. And I don't, I'm living in it, but I don't want no parts of it. But I know I got to live here until that time comes when Jesus comes and take us home. My brothers and sisters, God loves you. He truly did. Does. God loves you. And he's asking you to love him back. Let him be first in your life. Let him be first. You can do it. He's giving you the power to do that through Jesus Christ. I love you, my brother and sister. Until we meet again. God bless you.